Hello, my name is Mike Ward and I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Intelligence's Insights portfolio. That includes Pink Sheet, Script and Invivo. We're here at uh, Bio Europe Spring, which is the uh, in Stockholm. It's a, uh, an annual event uh, that takes place uh, in, in, in the springtime and involves pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, investors and you know, service providers, whether it be CROs or um, uh, sort of investment banks. And they're all looking to sort of, you know, really enhance the ecosystem that is, is, is developing here, looking to do deals, etc. Last year was a, a real banner year for, for European uh, venture capital activity. Uh, it was, we saw the most money put to work ever. And in fact, in the last quarter, in the first quarter of 2016, we saw the European biotech sector have its best ever first quarter when about $600 million was put uh, to work just in sort of the, the therapeutic space. Um, this has also allowed a number of venture capitalists to, get, to go out there and raise, raise new funds. I'm joined today by uh, Eric uh, De La Fortel, who's a venture partner with Sir Venture Partners, which is a, a, a European uh, VC. And just last December, they went out and raised a new 160 million euro fund, which is actually focused specifically on the microbiome. And uh, I'm joined by Eric, so um, thank, you, thank you for coming. And uh, Eric, this, 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 you know, why pick on the microbiome as, uh, as the, the focus for, 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 for a new fund? Well, I come from the drug industry, and in the drug industry, every time you put out a new big drug, it has to be differentiated. And what I learned in venture is that the funds need to be differentiated as well. And so venture had, since 2006, uh, established its uh, differentiation as working at the interface between nutrition and health and drug discovery. Right. <clears throat> and this interface, as it enabled us to, to explore and discover the theme of the microbiome biology before most of the other groups and to really focus on this new area of biology and the products and diagnostics and, and, and nutritional products coming out of this biology. So uh, our CEO, Isabelle de Cremou, took the lead in raising a new fund with all these themes and this fund uh, closed in December of last year, 2015, uh, with 160 million, as you mentioned. Right, and yeah, so, so the idea of sort of your microbiome, where you've got the sort of the intersection of nutrition uh, and drug, drug you know, pharmaceutical companies, um, how easy was that to, to go out and you know, raise people to that kind of fund? Well, Fortunately for us, the environment helped a lot. Right. So the interest in the microbiome in the last two years went exponentially uh, in the increased direction. Yeah. And it really helped us attract the attention and have too many demands for uh, investment in our fund, which was oversubscribed. Yeah. Um, what we did to, to, to make the fund more interesting, but slightly more complex as well, is to try and have uh, strategic partners from, from industry that were both from the nutrition world and from the pharma world. Right. And having them seated, exchanging ideas around the same table is for us a huge enrichment. So for instance, in the nutritional field, uh, we have Danone uh, as a, a very important limited partner, but we have others such as uh, Tereos, a leader in, in sugar industry, uh, we have Le Safre, a leader in the yeast and bakery industry, and a number of others. Bell, a leader in uh, um, other types of, of industries, cheese for instance. Yeah. And on the farmer side, uh, we just have one because it's a lot more competitive. We couldn't have two of them together. And this one is Novartis, also a reference in the sector. Right, okay. So, so that's... Um, and, and so these are the, the, sort of the key limited partners and then presumably there are, there are smaller uh, backers or so then in the other categories, we have financial limited partners, the usual, you know, funds, banks, banks etc. And we have individual entrepreneurs who bring their knowledge and advise us at the same time. And often these are people who uh, uh, use venture investments to make good on their companies and then return the favor by investing into venture funds. Okay, okay. So uh, you mentioned the fact that been, in the last two years there's been a sort of big interest in, in the microbiome. What, what is actually, what, what were the triggers for that? Was there a key event or a couple of key events that has, has got that going? Um, well, the, the science has grown exponentially as, as measured by the number of publications. But at the same time, 
uh, unusually for a new area of science, it is popularized extremely rapidly. Wow. So witness the book of Julia Anders in, in, in Germany, and that's not an international bestseller. Witness a number of articles in, in, in popular magazines and, and newspapers. The, the microbiome is something that went from lab to public perception at a completely accelerated speed. Uh, for us, that's not what matters most. It's good to inform people. What matters most is the incredible breadth of uh, applications to uh, disease situations or health situations. So for instance, the, the, the microbiota transfer is a technique, a medical technique that is being popularized extremely rapidly in hospitals. And we have an investment in autologous microbiota transfer, a company called Mat Pharma in Lyon, uh, that is um, having a, an, a more advanced version of that technique. And that technique is known by most people. It, it's really amazing. I talk to people outside the field and they know about microbiota transfer because they've read it in a magazine or a newspaper. Uh, we have other companies such as Enterome in Paris, which is our, uh, at the moment the most developed company that really deeply understands the bio biology of the microbiome and uses it both on the diagnostic side and to discover new drugs in the classical Rx uh, fashion uh, in this new area of biology. Um, yeah, I could quote other companies. So, so, so what, what, what are the kind of assets then um, are you looking for and how well developed do they have to be to attract your attention? So to give you some examples about the breadth of our current portfolio, so the two companies I quoted before, uh, we also have a company called LNC uh, in Bordeaux, which is developing special foods and drugs for, obese, for metabolic syndrome, yeah. uh, based on a real knowledge of the microbiome and how to rebalance the microbiome in these patients, or even when they're not patients, they're pre-diabetics, uh, that, that could work as well. So they're really offering a new, um, a new insight into a disease that has uh, largely eluded pharmaceutical companies. Uh, we have a company called Targetis uh, in, in Rouen um, that is, uh, that is uh, working in a completely new biological mechanism to control appetite and weight for people. Um, we have several other investments. Uh, we have made an investment in, in Canada. We're working on several investments in the US. Um, so we have a, a portfolio that goes from uh, very early startup companies where basically there's a concept and we're building the company with them to a company. Our latest investment is in the Boston area and has 10 million in yearly sales, rapidly growing. So we span that range of private companies from the early inception to commercial who wants to expand internationally. And also a global perspective as well, because you mentioned that you've got people on the West Coast and you've got people so, here in Europe. Yes, by, by, by culture, we're a pan-European VC, yeah. but we are, uh, with the new Health for Life Fund, we're expanding internationally, making investments in the US, simply because uh, Health for Life is the only uh, funds dedicated to the microbiome worldwide and therefore we're called by companies uh, across the Atlantic for our expertise and for our leadership in the sector. So that then you know, begs the question, uh, presumably that means you always have to be the lead investor because you're the ones who you know, have the focus and the expertise. How easy is it to be, build syndicates um, because you know, we know that VCs like to sometimes hunt in packs. Yes, it's, uh, we, we like to, bring, do, to build syndicates and we are indeed, uh, in most cases, the lead investor. There are some, uh, um, some investors on the other side of the Atlantic who have capability and understanding of the microbiome, but it's still relatively rare. In Europe, definitely, we are uh, leading uh, all the rounds that we do. Um, and we like to have between 20 and 40 percent of the, of the capital of the companies we invest in uh, as, a, as a general rule. Uh, forming syndicates is becoming much easier, has become much easier in the last 12 to 18 months because most VC groups are aware of the microbiome, are either studying a strategy in this sector or happy to follow people who have a strategy. So we find it very easy to form syndicates. Usually we can even have the luxury of being selective with whom we work. Right. And I mean, it's kind of interesting. I mean, you closed the fund in, in December. Uh, I mean, clearly there was already some commitments before that, but it sounds like you've already got uh, quite a full portfolio. How many more companies do you think you might bring in, um, in into the portfolio uh, in, the, in the coming years? So we have, we have at the moment four or five companies in the pipeline in negotiation for closing. So expect more news in the, in the coming uh, weeks and months. Um, we, we think we will invest around 
25 companies with Health for Life and we would like to make most of these investments in the next four year period. So we have a busy schedule in, in, in front of us, uh, but we see more and more interesting companies coming up. Whereas the microbiome was uh, a bit of a, an emerging field two years ago, now we have tens of companies to look at and it diversifies. It was a lot of gut microbiome in the beginning. Now we have gut microbiome, skin microbiome, vaginal microbiome, mouth microbiome. It's, it's expanding rapidly enough that we have food for investment. Excellent. Well, Eric, thanks very much for coming by and, uh, and, and good luck with the investments. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. Bye.